overflows. Knowledge needs no belief. Children should be allowed to express themselves freely without any fear. Only then something blossoms out of them. That is mystical. But in the name of training, discipline and education, we lead them to a life of conditioning and belief system. A blind man believes in light. He has to. He has no eyes. You will be surprised that the blind man not only believes in light, he also believes in darkness. Ordinarily, people think that a blind man must be living in darkness. That is not true. Because to see darkness, you need eyes. Without eyes, you can neither see light nor know darkness. Darkness and light are not two things, but two poles of one reality. You can define darkness as less light, so too you can define light as less darkness. Indeed, the difference is of degree. Our eyes have a certain capacity that is very limited. All of our senses are very limited as well. Below that limit, you cannot see. And above that limit too, you cannot see. You can perceive both. Below, you cannot perceive both below and above. Truth exists beyond the realm of the known, above the capacity of the sense perception. Therefore, truth cannot be perceived through sense organs. For example, right now thousands of radio waves are passing, but you can hear none of them. You have to use a radio a mechanism which is more sensitive than your ears can catch those sounds which you they cannot catch. The same is truth about all the sense organs. A blind man is forced to believe in light. As a result, he is forced to believe in darkness as well and his belief keeps him blind. If he has not given the belief, if he was not given the belief, and he was told that he is blind and needs his eyes to be cured, that he does not need a philosopher, instead he needs a physician, perhaps he would be able to see and the moment he sees light, the question of belief does not arise. He knows it. Such is the way of the awakened one. They do not give you belief system. Instead, they give you the eyes to see, the, to realize truth, to give you the capacity to your sense perception that you can realize the truth on your own. Such is the situation with each one of us. That is why we do not realize truth. Any belief indicates your ignorance and your blindness. It gives you a false sense as if you know. I have heard that the American scout leaders rejected one of the best scouts, a 14-year-old child. The topmost among all the scouts, he was winner of many prizes. They were promoting him to a higher position 
and he had to fill a form. This is one of the basic beliefs of the scouts. God exists. The boy refused. He said, I do not know. And unless I know, how can I say God exists? You are forcing me to lie. In the 20th century America, the boy is thrown out of the scout because he does not believe in God. I do not see the point. What does God has to do with the scouts? And why should this be a fundamental for every scout? The parents of the child took the case to the court it is simply inhuman. He was the best cadet and just a stupid thing and on the ground also he is more right than all the leaders of the scout who have determined their constitution. All that he said was, I do not know. How can I say God exists or not? First, I have to know. Knowledge is punished. Inquiry is punished. Darkness, blindness, obedience are rewarded. The case must have been decided by the Supreme Court of America in favor of that little boy who has asserted the very brightest, the birthright of the man to inquire and to find. And the clause about God should be removed from the scout principles. In the first place, God has nothing to do with the scouts. The scouts have nothing to do with God. This is all unnecessarily hypothesis imposed on children. But behind this whole face it are your politicians, your religious leaders, in a very roundabout way, they are forcing the small children the idea of God. They are afraid. They are very much frightened of inquiry. Why one should be afraid of inquiry? The answer is clear. He knows perfectly well that it is only a belief. If you inquire deeply, you are not going to find God. If God is a reality, then all the religions should insist on inquiry. I insist each one of you inquire, meditate and go deeper into yourself. You will find a tremendous reality but not God. You will find consciousness in its ultimate flowering eternal. But you will not find an old man with a long beard and the beard must be, by this time, really long, miles and miles long. For centuries he has been sitting there. You will not find God. All religions are frightened of such inquiry that why this separation happened and all the religions have been against science because sooner or later, science is going to prove. It has proved already that its method of doubt brings you closer to reality. It is open secret of life. It makes you really intelligent, alert, and knowing what the truth is. But science up to now has remained concerned only with the objective world that surrounds you. Religions have kept humanity in darkness 
when the scientists are doing such a stupid thing as well. They are aware of everything and inquiring about everything in the world except themselves. The scientist in his lab is the only person who is left out of inquiry. Everything else he inquires about and inquires deeply without any prejudice. But he forgets who the inquirer is and is there any inquiry possible about an inquirer? Is this, is there any possibility of observing objective reality without an observer? And that is what scientists has been doing for 300 years. They inquire about the observed world, but they are not worried about the subjective reality. Religion works on subjective reality and overlooks the objective reality. Hence, both of them are incomplete. The day science and religion merges together, that would be a great benediction. Enough for now.